A casual glance at the condition of our world will reveal just how far away from God our society has traveled. Political tension, financial instability, widespread violence, and the list goes on and on. All of this is a reminder that we need revival. In this study, Scott Pauley leads us through a study of the Old Testament book of Habakkuk and brings a comparison from our day to the day in which Habakkuk served. What was needed in his day is exactly what our world needs today, heaven-sent revival. Let's consider his message and receive help from Habakkuk. If you've been around church for any length of time, you can get to the place where you know all the right things to say, where you, you know how to win Bible trivia and answer all the questions, uh, say amen at the right places, string together enough religious cliches to sound like a spiritual person, say God bless you at the right time, but the talk has to be translated into the walk. So uh, what we know and what we say, we believe, somewhere has to become uh, a part of our daily life. We've come today to one of the great principles of spiritual awakening. And we've talked about expectancy and responsiveness and attentiveness, and now we come to where the rubber meets the road, obedience. Are we actually going to do what God tells us to do? Or are we just going to listen to other people talk about it? Are we going to talk about it ourselves? Or are we going to do something with what the Lord is saying to us? We return again to Habakkuk chapter 2 and verse number 2. I'm telling you, there's a lot in these verses and the Lord answered me and said, Write the vision and make it plain upon tables that he may run that readeth it. Now, we've talked about the reading part. That's where you begin. Read the word. Read it for yourself. Read it prayerfully. Read it daily. Uh, read it with a desire to know God and commune with the Lord. But you read it for this aim, that you want to take the next step of obedience to God. Have you ever read the Word and walked away not remembering anything that you read? Well, if that's the case, we've all done it, then you're probably not going to do anything. But if you could walk away with one principle, just one principle, one truth that you could apply to your life today, uh, it may seem small, but if you do that every day, this time next year, you'll be 365 steps of obedience closer to being where God wants you to be than you are today. It, that's the way it happens, but you have to be willing to. To run, that means to take action, to, to do what God tells you to do. What do we learn about obedience here uh, from this word run, that he may run that readeth it? Now, in the context, of course, Habakkuk is saying God has something to say to the nation, and we better not only hear it, we must heed it, and we must hasten to it. So let's not put it off. Let's, let's respond to it right now. Remember, judgment was at the door. Well, the truth is that this, this principle of immediate, enthusiastic obedience is what he's trying to teach all of us. Let me give you a good New Testament example. Do you remember when Philip the evangelist was uh, out in the desert? And God had led him out of uh, a great citywide revival campaign and into the wilderness. I'm sure he's wondering what on earth I'm doing out here. And then the Holy Spirit said right there, there's a man in that chariot reading Isaiah the prophet. You need to go talk to him. The Bible says uh, that Philip ran. He ran. He literally ran to where that Ethiopian eunuch was. That is a picture of what we're talking about, immediate, enthusiastic obedience. And not only that, the word run, I think, gives us a picture of progress. See, the word moves us along. It brings us nearer to all the will of God for us. That's why in Scripture you have so many times the Christian life viewed as a walk and a run. Uh, we are to, to walk in light and walk in love and walk circumspectly and walk in the Spirit. Walk, walk, walk. What is that? Take the next step. Do the next right thing. Put one foot in front of another. Uh, some days it doesn't seem like it's much of a run. It's more of a walk. I, uh, I try three or four days a week to to run at this stage in my life, it's more of a jog for Jesus than it is an all-out run. I'm not setting any records, I can tell you that. 
And I've learned that even intermittent running, so you walk and run, walk and run, walk and run, is healthy for you and good for you. Uh, but we're moving forward. We're, we're not moving fast, perhaps, all the time, but we're moving forward. Uh, the same thing is true as far as progress in the Christian life. You don't run all the time. and You don't mount up with the wings all the time. Some days you just walk without feigning. Uh, but this is the Christian life. It's forward motion. It's moving forward. You can't sit in neutral. You can't be stagnant. In the Christian life, you're either drifting back or you're moving forward. Hudson Taylor said, God is always advancing. So if God is advancing, he wants us to advance with him. He wants us to move forward. And that's why you have this word run. It is a word of action. It is a word of, of enthusiastic, immediate obedience to God. The apostle Paul wrote to the church in Galatia and he said, you did run well. Who did hinder you? that ye should not obey the truth. The Christian life really is a race. Paul often used that analogy. Early on, we start off running for the Lord, running hard for the Lord. If you're not careful, somewhere you get hindered. Maybe it's a person in your life, not a what, but a who that hinders you. Some distraction, some weariness, and you get off track. It's time to get back in the race, my friend. It's time to put on your running shoes, lay aside the weights, Look to the finish line. Get after it again. Listen to the words of the psalmist. Psalm 1 verse 1. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. Did you hear the digression of the first verse? First he's walking, then he's standing, then he's sitting. Let me tell you how to keep from the digression. Keep progressing. Keep moving forward. Let me tell you how not just to stand around or sit in the seat of the scornful. Keep running the race that God has set before you. Do what God says. So let's meddle just a moment. Is there anything the Lord has told you to do that you have not yet done? Is there any step of obedience that God has said, all right, this is for you, and you've not yet taken it? You may say, well, yes, but it's, it's been a while. All right, well, that's where you're stuck. Start there. You may say, yes, but it's very small. Nothing small if our great God tells you to do it. You may say, well, I've, I've taken so many other steps of obedience. Wait a minute. You stop moving forward at any place where you stop obeying the Lord. The greatest privilege on earth is to hear the voice of God. I mean to, to know God is speaking to you. But can you imagine us hearing from God and then not being willing to obey what it is he has said to do, uh, to, to run to take the next step, to move forward with our Lord Jesus. I just love how practical the Scripture is. Now, this is a a deep uh, passage on spiritual awakening and readiness for revival and what to do when you're in need and your nation's in trouble. But at the heart of it, at the core of it all, it's so practical. It is simple, immediate, and personal obedience to Jesus Christ. So I want to challenge you today. Uh, expectancy, yes. Responsiveness, yes. Attentiveness, yes. But obedience. It's time to be a doer. It's time in the, in the words of the verse we closed with in our last study, Revelation chapter 1, verse 3, to keep those sayings which you've read and which you've heard. Uh, this means not that you just keep them to yourself or know them, but that you obey them. You walk in the way God wants you to walk. Father, I pray right now for every person listening to me, I pray today that there would be a spirit of humble obedience in every one of our hearts, that we will say yes to the Lord and we will do whatever it is you've told us to do. Give us wisdom to know how and courage to do it. Give us the the determination to do it immediately, as soon as possible. Father, help us to run that have read the truth today. And send a great revival. Lord, we need it. And we thank you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. There is nothing so wrong in our world today that a heaven-sent revival could not fix. Lord, we need revival. Would you consider partnering with us in prayer? If you would, please visit etj.bible and subscribe to become a prayer partner. You will also receive a weekly devotional email and be the first to hear of new resources and events. If this burden for revival is real to you and 
you would like to help us get this message to others, would you also consider investing in this ministry? You can make a one-time investment or set up reoccurring gifts. However God leads you to partner with us, thank you. We look forward to our next time together on Enjoying the Journey.